These apples are amazing. They smell so good. So I've just collected a whole bunch. Some of the ones that were on my tree that I was trying to preserve and keep protected with these bags. And it's kind of worked. I've got some that are nice in good condition. Some of them have split, which is kind of interesting. Oh, this one is nice. So what I will probably do is dry out these little bags and then put them away to use next year. Some of these have bruises on them, so I think I'm going to cook those ones. I'll probably just cut off the good bits and then stew them up and can them. It's turned into a really nice day. It was raining for ages, like all week, and then suddenly today it just brightened up and got really sunny and warm actually. These here are my onion flowers where I'm trying to save the seeds. I put these bags around them a while ago to catch them if they fell off so they didn't just go all over the floor. But they don't seem to be drying out because it just is quite wet at the moment. I think I'm going to bring them in and see if they will dry inside. Oh my goodness, it feels like I waited so long for anything to happen in this vegetable patch and like now, in like September, stuff is finally growing. These are a bit embarrassing though, it's a swede that I planted, I had a whole old packet of seeds and I didn't know what to do with them so I just threw them in a tray to grow them and these swedes didn't have the best time so it's hilariously tiny, but it's still a swede. It's a new vegetable I've never grown before. Still, that's exciting. This though is the thing I'm really happy about. Look, squashes. Finally, all the squash plants I put in are making things. It feels like there are squashes just growing up everywhere now. Oh my goodness, this one is the best one. I think he might actually be ready. I don't know. Maybe it can get a bit bigger. Okay, the squashes are taking over. I've also got some tomato plants here and they're actually making quite a lot of tomatoes. But the problem is none of them are ripening. They're all green and I'm not sure now summer's kind of over if they're going to actually ripen.
For a long time, I have wanted to learn more about edible plants and fungi, and I've been trying to educate myself using books, looking at pictures, seeing what I find out and about, and trying to identify things. I'm at the point where there are a few things that I'm 100% certain about, and that's a great feeling. I'm really comfortable about those things. This year I've noticed a lot of one type of mushroom growing. It's called the shaggy ink cap, or I think in other parts of the world it's called a shaggy mane mushroom. After a day or two, it starts to turn into like gloopy ink and it just disintegrates into black ink. The best time to pick this mushroom is when it's quite new, when it's still completely white and before it starts to turn into ink. So I've been able to identify this one for a while, but I wanted to take the next step and try and cook with it more and just get comfortable eating it. I actually tried to cook a couple of dishes using this mushroom this year, and to be honest, the first two attempts <laughs> were not very nice. What I cooked just wasn't delicious. It made me realise how long it's been since I've cooked with an entirely new food. Most of the foods that we use, we are very sure what does and doesn't work. But a lot of these wild foods, because they're not readily available, there aren't many recipes and a lot of people don't know what to do with them. And this for me was one of the barriers with foraging foods. I feel like getting to the point of not just being able to eat the food without fear, but really maximizing its potential and enjoying it is a bit of a journey but that's hopefully where I'm gonna get with some of these wild foods. The main reason I'm interested in eating these foods, partly to get nutrients that might otherwise not be in my diet, but also as kind of a way of engaging with the environment around me. I really like the empowering feeling of recognizing a wild plant and being able to pick it and then prepare it into a meal that you feel is nourishing. Obviously, some of these mushrooms and other plants can be poisonous, which is why I am very cautious. And at the moment, I am only eating the ones that I'm absolutely certain I can identify. The reason I like this ink cap mushroom is because it doesn't really have any lookalikes that you could mistake it for. I know some people who grew up in other parts of Europe who are very confident about picking all kinds of fungi and mushrooms to eat. And I am quite jealous of their knowledge because at the moment that isn't where I am, but I am working on becoming more comfortable with identifying things and feeling as if I'm more in touch with the environment around me, feeling like it is a part of my home rather than an alien outside threatening force. I eventually managed to cook a sort of lentil stew with tomato and I added the ink cap mushrooms to that. It was really tasty in the end. I think the mushrooms maybe go better in a stew with other things rather than just on their own.
Last winter, I knitted myself a jumper to keep me warm. And I'd never actually knitted a whole garment before, but I really enjoyed it and I was so pleased with the outcome. So I had a bit of the same yarn left over and I think I want to try and make myself something else. It's not quite enough for a whole jumper this time, but I will maybe try and make a vest or something like that. Earlier this week, I pressed a load of apples from the orchard here, and I've got loads of juice for cider, and also here I'm gonna try and make some apple cider vinegar. So I tried this last year, and it didn't really work. I did it in a different way. I mixed apple scraps with water, and then I left that to turn to vinegar, but it just never really got there and I was never really confident about it, so I didn't use it in the end. This year, I'm gonna do it a different way, which I read about. So I'm gonna start with apple juice, which I made by pressing the apples, and I'm gonna to add to it, like a kind of starter, some cider vinegar, which is raw and unfiltered. So this has already got the culture needed inside it, and if I add it to my own apple juice, then it should turn the rest of it into vinegar. I had an idea. These are lime tree seeds. They grow on the tree around this time of year. They really remind me of beads and I thought maybe I could do something with them. I tried making a hole through them and it seems to work. So I'm going to do a few more and see if I can thread them onto a piece of string. One of the things I really like about foraged natural materials is that they have a really different sort of value to them. So they're obviously not valuable in terms of buying something and being expensive. They are free usually, and you can just go and take them and collect them. There's no barrier to it. But the thing that I find interesting is that they are only available for a certain amount of time usually. And it's totally non-negotiable. If you don't go and get them when they're ready, you can't get them. And also, you can't really buy them anywhere, things like this. It feels like in so many parts of life, we've completely overcome seasonal limitations and we can just have anything at any time, no problem. The other thing I like about these kind of materials and the value thing is that when you put a lot of time and effort into making something using them, it 
kind of has a value, but the value is completely in time and effort. It's like a completely intangible value that you put into the thing by working with it. It doesn't inherently have any value. It's just a little bit of organic material that will rot away 